logic gate from the topic of semiconductor a uh, signature chapter of JWE means now you could see it's a combination of or and an NAND gate and based on this arrangement we need to figure out which is the correct truth table a bit of calculation and an interesting calculation let's see this is A, this is B, so when you OR them, that will be A or B. And the same A comes here, and these two inputs are fed to the NAND gate. So that will be A, A plus B. In fact, that's OR, or many times you just say it plus, and that's the NAND output. A, A plus B, and this. Well, we need to simplify it further. The D Morgans would be saying, break the bar and change the sign. So that dot is going to be R. And here is A or B. Further, this is A bar, and this would be written as A bar dot B bar, further using the De Morgans. Break the bar, change the sign. That goes straight forward. Then you take common A bar because that distributive property is valid and eventually this becomes a bar because this is one so what does it mean the ultimate output is a bar output a bar means whatever is the value of a the output is simply complement of a irrespective of what is b because the output has no dependence on b not at all and that is clearly being reflected in option number four because you see Whatever is A, the output is being complemented, irrespective of value of B. So option number four is the correct one. Time to move for the next. Question from electrostatics, conductor. And a nice property of conductor is used here. You see it says that shown in the figure is a shell made of a conductor. It has inner radius A, outer radius B, and carries a charge Q. So the shell is given a charge Q. Apart from that, at the center, there's a dipole. So first of all, we need to put the charge distribution because of that given dipole C. An arrangement of distribution would come inside. So somewhere minus plus, something like that. But yes, there would be an arrangement and that would be non-uniform. And one more thing you know, using the shell theorem, that immediately out of this boundary, the inner charges, which would be the dipole and the inner induced one, will have no effect. Immediately you come out of that boundary. So the conclusion is the effect of the dipole and the internal induced would be zero. Immediately we come outside, in other words, on the outer surface, there would be no induction. But yes, it has been given a charge Q, and that in turn would reside in a symmetric way. So if that is the given situation, option number three would be correct because outside the electric field would be just due to this, and that is as if a point charge is kept at the center. This is quite a nice question. Lots of properties have been used in order to frame this thing. Now let's go to the next. 24th question. This is a question from Dimension. And we know the question related to Dimension that is asked in this sort of examination is not expected where you do Dimension by the regular way. There is a certain amount of craftsmanship involved in that. You need to be a bit tricky while calculating. Like it says that in terms of epsilon naught and mu naught, you need to calculate the resistance. Well, I would say that, like you remember, tau equals to RC, tau equals to L by R. Similarly, resistance is under root mu naught by epsilon naught. It's expected that an aspirant would remember it. However, if that is not the case, let me show you how can we reach this conclusion quite easily. It's something like, say, you can know that L by R would be equals to RC because this is time, this is time. And this means the 
resistance would be equals to under root of L by C. And now this is in fact mu naught by epsilon naught. You can see in that way like capacitance is epsilon naught multiplied by distance. Inductance is also mu naught multiplied by distance. So that amount of you know tricky point you can do and eventually you get option number three as the correct one. That was question number 24. Now we'll go to question number 25.